screencast video lecture we are going to see about the pentose phosphate pathway which is commonly regarded as an alternative pathway then which one is a primary pathway in any organism glycolysis serves as a primary pathway and this kind of pathways ed pathway pentose phosphate pathway they are all considered as an alternative and under certain condition they can also functional parallel to the primary pathway they are found to be distributed in wide range of prokaryotes eukaryotes as well as plants animals even the human system you can able to come across the presence of the pentose phosphate pathway this pathway operates there in the cytoplasm takes place both under aerobic and anaerobic conditions generation of reducing e coulombs in the form of nadph is an important outcome of this pathway as this nadph is required for the other biosynthetic reactions of the cell the next one is production of ribose 5 phosphate which is used for other biosynthesis process mainly for nucleotides and nucleic acid synthesis and also for the production of erythrose 4 phosphate which is again used for the aromatic amino acid synthesis now we look at the other possible terms of the pathway that is it is also referred as a hp shunt pathway or oxidative pentose phosphate pathway remember reductive pentose phosphate pathway is photosynthesis process whereas pentose phosphate pathway is referred as a oxidative pentose phosphate pathway it is also referred as a phosphogluconate pathway phosphoketolase pathway warburg's and dickins pathway so these are all the other analogous names for this pathway the total pathway can be divided into two things that is one half of the pathway is referred as a oxidative pathway in which at the final end product ribulose 5 phosphate will be produced whereas the other half of the pathway is commonly referred as a non oxidative branch of the pentose phosphate pathway now we look at the explanation related for the oxidative pathway glucose is first converted to glucose 6 phosphate with the help of enzyme hexokinase in the next step it is converted to 6 phosphogluconate with the help of another enzyme called glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase the point you all need to note here is this particular step that is conversion of glucose 6 phosphate to 6 phosphogluconate is referred as a zysteine fermentation and the enzyme that is involved in this step of conversion is always a limiting enzyme there in the living systems the next step is conversion of 6 phosphogluconate to ribulose 5 phosphate this is accomplished by the enzyme 6 phosphogluconate dehydrogenase both these steps results in production of lot of nadph that is reducing e coulombs these reducing e coulombs have been commonly channeled there into the fat cells there the nadph is used to prevent the oxidative stress it reduces glutathione via glutathione reductase enzyme the glutathione reductase enzyme is the one which converts reactive hydrogen peroxide into water molecule with the help of another enzyme glutathione peroxidase apart from that another important process in which this nadph reducing e coulombs are used is mainly in the autotrophic organism especially to fix the carbon dioxide into cell carbon with the help of the kelvin cycle now we look at the other half that is non oxidative branch of the pentose phosphate pathway here this particular branch operates more there in the growing cells mainly due to the reason that growing cells required a lot of nucleotides for the formation of the nucleotides you need a precursor ribose 5 phosphate so this precursor need to be synthesized in more amount only when the non oxidative branch of the pathway has been operating this will be mediated by a ribose 5 phosphate isomerase as well as ribulose phosphate epimerase enzyme this results in the conversion of ribulose 5 phosphate molecule into xylulose 5 phosphate and ribose 5 phosphate molecule again with the help of a transketolase enzyme it is converted to pseudoheptulose 7 phosphate as well as glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate further through other rearrangement erythrose 4 phosphate as well as fructose 6 phosphate is converted into glucose 6 phosphate molecule and 
erythrose 4 phosphate can be converted directly into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate molecule. If you look at here, in the right hand side, you can able to see what are all happening for this intermediary compound on the operation of a non oxidative branch of the pentose phosphate pathway. Say, ribose 5 phosphate, as I already told, in a growing cell, it needs a lot of ribose 5 phosphate for nucleotide synthesis. Whereas this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate will be channeled there into glycolysis. Again, fructose 6 phosphate will also go into the glycolysis process. Whereas if you look at into the erythrose 4 phosphate, it is essentially required for the synthesis of amino acids like tryptophan, tyrosine and phenylalanine. Now, we look at the overall reaction of this pentose phosphate pathway. 6 molecule of glucose 6 phosphate in the presence of 12 molecule of NADAP is converted into 5 molecule of glucose 6 phosphate and 6 molecule of carbon dioxide and 12 molecule of NADPH. Now, we look at the salient features of the pentose phosphate pathway. It operates in conjunction or alternative to the glycolysis pathway. In certain organism, instead of pentose phosphate pathway, ED pathway plays an alternative role in the energy generation. It is also referred as exos monophosphate pathway. It operates in a wide range of prokaryotes and eukaryotes including plants, animals, humans. It particularly operates in the liver, mammary gland and adrenal cortex. In bacteria, it operates there in the cytosol. In plants, it takes place in the plastid region. Under aerobic or anaerobic condition, it can able to operate. As we already discussed, it consists of two phases. One is oxidative phase and another one is a non-oxidative phase of the cycle. It is important in both biosynthesis and catabolism. However, biosynthesis gains a more important there through the operation of this cycle. Through this pathway, pentose sugar, especially ribulose 5-phosphate is produced. It can be effectively used there for the carbon dioxide trapping, that is for carbon fixation, mainly in certain autotrophic organisms such as cyanobacteria. The step involving conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to 6-phosphogluconate is technically referred as a zystine fermentation and the enzyme responsible for this particular step is also limiting there in the living organism. NADPH that have been formed through the operation of this pathway is also serves as a source of electron for reduction of molecules during the biosynthesis process that is for the anabolic process especially related to fatty acid as well as amino acid biosynthesis. We already seen the explanation related to how NADPH reduces the glutathione via the glutathione reductase enzyme when we are looking into the steps of the pathway. The pathway produces two important precursor metabolites. One is erythrose 4 phosphate, which is used to synthesize the aromatic amino acids like tryptophan, and it also required for synthesis of vitamin B6, that is pyridoxylamine, and the other intermediary compound, that is ribose 5 phosphate, is primarily used for the synthesis of nucleic acids. The products of this pathway, mainly fructose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate are commonly used to replenish the functioning of the glycolysis and under certain condition, they helps to start the HMP pathway by itself also. Intermediates in the pentose phosphate pathway may be used to produce ATP at substrate level through the glycolysis process. Complete oxidation of carbon to carbon dioxide is mediated by pentose phosphate pathway in the organism that doesn't possess a functional TCA cycle. The reason is, TCA cycle is the final step in which the carbon present in the organic compound is completely getting oxidized into carbon dioxide.